In this video we're going to look at the Bower Package Manager and how we can use it to install and maintain JavaScript and front-end based packages. To install Bower you first need to have an npm installed as we talked about in the previous video. And it's simply a matter of typing npm install minus g so that we're installing it globally and then Bower. This will go ahead and download the Bower packages and install them into the relevant locations. It may take a moment or two to actually download it. But once installed, it will go ahead and display a list of all of the packages that it's downloaded. It's at this point that I would typically open up a terminal window. In this case I'm going to use GitHub Bash Client. And this is because when you're using Bower or any other package manager, you're typically also going to be using something like GitHub or some other version control system. And so using a single terminal helps streamline the entire process. So I've gone ahead and created a folder within my computer called Bower Example. And I've moved to it within the terminal window. The first thing that we're going to want to do is to install packages. If you're using Power for JavaScript, for example, it's quite common that you're going to want to install jQuery, which is a pretty common JavaScript library. So to do that, we simply type Power install, and because it's a common package, jQuery is all that we need to type. If we look into the Power components folder, which is being created, we can see that we also have a jQuery folder, which is also being created which contains all of the source files that you would expect to find within a jQuery installation. This means that you don't need to go through the entire process of downloading zip files and extracting them into specific places. The entire process can be very automated. Because jQuery is quite a common package, all we needed to type here was jQuery. If we wanted to install a less common package, however, we could just do a similar command, but instead of just the package name, we can install any other package which is available on GitHub. So in this case we're going to install the Polymer project, which is under the Polymer username, and the Polymer project specifically. So as you can see here, the Polymer project with the uppercase P represents Polymer the user while the lowercase polymer represents the lowercase project called polymer. If we look in the Bower Components folder again, we can see that this is going ahead and download the polymer and web components JS, both of which are part of the polymer project. And of course all of the relevant files have been downloaded in each one. It can get quite tedious having to download individual packages all of the time, and so instead we can delete this. And we can instead initialize Bower in this directory by typing Bower in it. This is going to ask us a whole series of questions, which we're just going to mostly tap through. All of these are optional. You could, of course, leave them all blank. But just to make it more representative of what you would actually expect, I'm just going to complete some of these. So you may find, for example, when you're working with keywords, you'll want to include multiple keywords. And of course, if you want to include other keywords, you would use a comma separated list. Because of the integration with other projects, things like the author are pulled automatically from GitHub. And of course, if you wanted to specify licenses, you could do so. Now, because I've deleted the components which we installed previously, we're going to select no here. But we could of course select yes if we didn't delete them. Which would import all of the installed components and set them as dependencies. This will go ahead and create a JSON file, which it shows you the output of. 
Once we're happy with it, we can select yes, and that will go ahead and create the bowers.json file as you can see here. If we open this, this is exactly what we saw in the terminal window. Now we obviously want to add some packages to this, as we did previously. We want to add, for example, the jQuery package. But instead of just installing it, if we add the flag, save, that will actually download the package, but as well as downloading the package, it will actually add it to the bow.json file to include the jQuery dependency here. This section obviously was completely missing when we didn't have any dependencies. And we can do the exact same thing with Polymer, just by adding the save flag onto the same command. Which will download all of the packages while also adding on the actual dependency to our bower.json file. And of course, all of these files have been downloaded again. Every now and then, the versions of these projects are going to update. And we're going to want to be able to use the latest versions of the projects as well. So to get the latest versions of projects, we simply need to type bower update. That will go through all of our dependencies and ensure that we have the latest versions, which in this case we do. You will however notice when we're using the versions that we're always using the same format, which is three numbers. The major version, the minor version, and then patches. Major versions break backwards compatibility, minor versions increase functionality, while patches fix bugs. This is called semver or semantic versioning, and is common amongst all of the npm based package managers. If we look at the version numbers, you'll no doubt notice that we have a tilde here and an asterisk here. And if you're using Bower or any package manager on a regular basis, you'll also notice a whole host of other different options available. But what do they actually mean? To demonstrate this, I'm going to change this version to 1.8.0, which is an old version of jQuery. We can update the packages using Bower update. And now we'll go ahead and download the relevant versions as we specify them. So if we go ahead and look at the jQuery version, we can see that this is version 1.8 now. Even though we have these error messages, but we can just ignore these for now. So providing a specific version number means that that's the version number that we're going to rely on. We can also specify ranges that we want our version number to be. So we could say that our version number is going to be greater than version 1.8.0, which will be the very latest version after that version. So if we go ahead and do this now, it will download the version 2, which will be the latest version. And we can see that these files are the same files as we had when we first downloaded jQuery. And as we can see here, it's version 2.14. We can specify ranges. So we can specify that we want it to be greater than version 1.8 and less than version 1.9. Executing this now will obviously download the latest version 1.8. And as you can see, we should actually have a space between the two version numbers. And in this case, we've downloaded version 1.8.3 plus 1, whatever that happens to be. As you would expect, you can have greater than, greater than, equal to, and less than, and less than, and equal to. And if you don't specify any operator at all, for example, like this, that will be the equivalent of equal to. Now we can of course have some wild cards here to make things easier. So we could replace the zero here with an X, or if we wanted to, with an asterisk. X and asterisk are both interchangeable when it comes to the version numbers and are both considered to be wild cards. So of course if we do this now, we're obviously going to get the same version back out, because this is the latest version, and Bower will always look for the latest version. Another way to have done the range would have been to do 1.8.0 and then a dash and then 1.9.0. 
This is the same as saying is greater than or equal to 1.80 and less than or equal to 1.90. And so in this case it would probably have downloaded the 1.90 as you can see here. There are two other symbols that you would typically expect to see when you're working with version numbers, which are the tilde and the caret. If you look at the tilde first, if you provide all three numbers of a version number with a tilde, it will automatically update the last number within that version. We could of course delete the last number and just have 1.8. And in this case, it will go ahead and download the latest version, which is 1. Point something. So if we look at this, it will download, in this case, the latest version 1.8, which is 1.83 plus 1. Of course, if we remove the second of the numbers and run, that will update again. It will download a much later version. In this case, it's version 1.11. So the tilde basically keeps up to date with the latest version as far as possible while observing any limitations that you observe. So with jQuery for example there is version 2 out and we've specifically not updated to version 2 because we specified that we only want version 1 as far as the major version is concerned. We basically says that we only want to include version 1 branches up to the latest branch and because version 2 branches are obviously after version 1 branches we don't want to include those. jQuery is a good example of how this works because for quite a while jQuery maintains both version 1 and version 2 of its libraries and so it was quite common to have version 1 and version 2 updates released at the same time. And even though the updates overlapped one another, Bauer just ignores the fact that version 2 even exists if you use the tilde like this. So if we move back down to 1.8.0, and this time we're going to look at what the caret does. So this is almost the opposite of the tilde. In that it allows any changes which don't modify the most left non-zero character. If we change this to version 1.11 as our base download, we're saying that we want 1 to be the leftmost character which we don't want to change. And so any updates to the next two digits can change. And so if we run this in Bauer Update, we're going to update to the latest version, which is going to be 1.11.3. Which is obviously not going to change the version 1, even though versions 2 do exist. If when we're working on a project, we decide that we no longer want to include a package within our project, we also have the option to uninstall packages, which is achieved by typing Bauer, uninstall. And then the package name. So in this case we're going to remove Bauer. This simply deletes all of the contents of the folder. For example we'll see that the Bauer folder has been removed as well as the web components folder. It doesn't however remove it from our Bauer.json file. If we want to remove it completely we need to manually delete it. Running Bauer updates now won't actually re-downloads that package for us. As great as Bauer is as far as things like JavaScript and front-end web design are concerned, it does however fall short when it comes to things like PHP packages, which are typically managed with a package manager such as Composer, which is going to be the subject of our next video, so make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss that.